Oh yeah, it's finally time for a Bloons TD6 review. G'day guys, how's it going? It's Castlegate here, and I'm going to give you my first impressions of Bloons TD6. Now, I do have to go ahead and admit that this is not the first time I've played Bloons TD6. Although, having said that, I only just purchased the game relatively recently, only about a month ago. Um, this game has been out since 2018, and yeah, I'm two years late to the party, but that's okay, better late than never. Now, let's have a look at this game. What can I say about this? Well, firstly, I'm going to be comparing it, obviously, to Bloom's TD5, because that's the obvious comparison. Um, it looks and feels kind of similar to Bloom's TD5, but it is better in just about every single way, to be honest. Um, I've, I've actually got Bloom's TD5 on my iPad, and uh, I do have the option to play both. Uh, it's a bit situational where I can take the iPad and play it while running on the cross trainer or something, so I like to play Bloom's TD5, but if I had to have a choice between playing one or the other, I would now almost always pick Bloom's TD6 because it's just like... If you've ever played Bloons TD4 as well, it's like the difference between Bloons TD4 and Bloons TD5. That difference again from TD5 to this version, that's the same difference. It's that same level of improvement. And for those who don't know Bloons TD4 or have never played it before, um, well, the jump, let's just say, from 4 to 5 was quite large. Uh, it was just a much more well-polished, better-looking version of the game. Um, it was it was just streets ahead. Bloons TD5, make no mistake, is a great game. But this is a great game yet again. So, Bloons TD6, what's going on with it? Well, firstly, you'll find that there are lots of monkeys and they are all set in um, certain groups. This is the primary monkeys group, which basically groups what looks like, for the most part, most of the towers that you could consider to be the original towers from the first three Bloons TDs, with the exception of the Glue Gunner. That was one of the first monkeys to be seen in um, Bloons TD 4, I believe. Or was it 3? I honestly can't remember. Maybe it was in 3. But yeah, these are your primary towers. That's the primary tower group. Um, there's not really much to say about these guys. You know and love all of these if you've ever played Bloons TD5. And, uh, well, yeah. They've all got um, more upgrade paths. All towers have more upgrade paths. I'll get to that later. But these are the ones you know and love. But to be honest, you won't be using many of them because there are many more towers to use and for the most part while they hold up their own relatively nicely there are more options and i find myself going for other towers more often than not so let's move on to the military group these are the military ones obviously anything that looks like it's from military so if it's in a, a submarine a submarine a boat or a helicopter it's or even a plane it's going to be military. Also, you've got the Sniper Monkey and the Mortar Monkey. They're all your military towers. They kind of play very similar, if not almost the same, as the, their variants from TD5. Only this time, again, they've got more upgrade paths and everything's also got a fifth tier option of which you can have one of on the field at any point in time. Um, they're pretty good. I especially find myself constantly going for the Monkey Buccaneer and also at least one Monkey Sub as well for the obvious reason, the same reason you would actually go for the Monkey Sub in the previous game is because down a certain um, upgrade path, you can give this thing pretty much almost infinite range. It can see what other monkeys can see, which is very nice. Uh, the Mortar Monkey is unfortunately, in my opinion, almost as useless as the Mortar Monkey from just about every single other version or every other game, which is the last two games. But having said that, there is one path that upgrades with an ability, a flare ability, which is actually quite useful for certain scenarios or situations. So it's not 100% useless, but it's kind of like, you know, 80% useless. Having said that, 
now that the game is changed, it's um, that well. Let's just say all of the towers have been given a new lease of life. There's more upgrade paths. There's more abilities all around. There's more buffs all around. And because you can't upgrade on all three paths at the same time, you can only choose two out of three upgrade paths. Your, your choice of variation of what type of tower you can ultimately decide this to be is much greater. Um, in fact, you can get... In in all balloons TD five, you could get, you know, basically a tower that was one of two different types of amazing tower. Now you can get one of three uh, different amazing towers for each of these towers, depending on the path you go and upgrade. But also you support with an extra upgrade path, which means really you've got variations, six different variations in total of tower. That you can get from one tower so there's six different fully upgraded mortar monkeys you can get um that are all a little bit different from each other same goes for every other tower so yeah there are variations of certain towers and i believe one of the uh, main things that makes this game so interesting actually and in fact very replayable is that you can keep on discovering new towers that you thought maybe they weren't so great just on paper by looking at them but once you try them out you didn't. You actually got to see exactly how great they were. Um, a nice surprise was actually the monkey ace. I hardly ever used the monkey ace unless I had enough money to just go straight for the spectre in the old game. But in this game, well, with the upgrade paths, it becomes a lot more useful. Um, yeah, all, all of the things that made towers have certain pitfalls were pretty much addressed in this particular version of the game. So, we have our military... Next, we have our monkey magics. All of these monkeys are considered magical. Now, you might be wondering why the ninja monkey of all monkeys is in the magical section. Well, when you think about it, they throw these um, down a certain upgrade path. They throw these like smart bombs and stuff like that. So towards the higher tiers of upgrades, you could say ninja monkeys do have some magical properties. Super Monkey is obviously magical. Come on, it's Super Monkey. You've got your wizard, very clearly magical, and you've got a couple of new towers here. The Alchemist and the Druid. These two, um, they're a bit situational. The Alchemist is really good at actually not attacking balloons, but rather making potions that they throw on other towers around them to give them buffs. That's mainly what the Alchemist is best at doing. Um, as for the druid, well, the druid actually steals one of the upgrade paths that used to be with the wizard monkey. The wizard monkey now has three upgrade paths, two of which have sort of like new abilities or, um, yeah, things that buff them and make them better as opposed to what, uh, the wizard monkey was or the monkey apprentice was back in the previous game. The druid actually steals the path that takes it down, um, the path of upgrading to lightning and also adding tornado winds. The druid now has that as one of its upgrade paths. Um, and it's not a bad path, to be honest. Mind you, the new path that is completely new, that is for the wizard monkey. Um, well, let's just say I might show that to you in another video, but uh, it's, it's a very different new mechanic. Um, it took me by surprise and, well, it's, it's interesting. Um, Visually, it kind of gets in the way of things, but, uh, well, well, we'll get to that when we get to it one day. Uh, let's see. What have we got? Now, we've got support. You might have noticed that this is the last sort of group of towers that you can have in the game. And for those of you who are astute may have noticed that you didn't see the balloon chipper and you didn't see the dartling monkey. That's because they're both gone. They're not in this version. Um, I kind of could take it or leave it really with the Dartling Monkey because that was kind of a um, micromanaging annoyance. It's a good uh, tower if you can be bothered putting in the effort, but I didn't really like it that much. It didn't suit my play style. Now, the Balloon Chipper, on the other hand, I missed that a lot because, honestly, it was overpowered. When it came to taking down lots of blimps, uh, you just spam a lot of balloon, um, balloon chippers, 
uh, back them up behind with something like the tech shooter upgraded to the fire um, path. And honestly, that combination shredded literally everything. It was just overpowered. Put down like 10 or 15 of those balloon chippers backed by about five of those fire tech shooters. And well, it just obliterated pretty much everything. There was nothing it couldn't handle. But sadly, gone. So instead, in the support, you've got your banana farm and your monkey village. They're um, pretty similar to what they used to be. Uh, let's see. The spike factory is there as support, which I find strange. Is, is it really support? But, um, yeah, the spike factory, one of the new upgrade paths, uh, sees it dropping these these spike things that uh, pretty much stay almost forever. They're really overpowered spikes. They just smash through everything. So Spike Factory does have a trick up its sleeve, which is pretty good. Um, amongst the other paths as well, it still has the good old famous, you know, spikes that go ahead and damage MOABs. And also the Spike Rain as well. That's still in there as one of the upgrade paths, which is good and it is useful. Um, especially if you get two or three of them, you just keep on dropping spikes everywhere and eventually you kind of destroy everything. But yeah, all in all, I'm surprised it's it's marked as a support tower, but eh, it is what it is. Lastly, the big surprise is the engineer monkey. The engineer is back and it's a support monkey. Why it's a support, I'm not sure. It attacks balloons directly. It is a tower that shoots at balloons directly. Um, it's, it drops all of these things on the path that goes ahead and either affects or attacks or traps the balloons directly. Yes, there are, there is one upgrade path that, uh, will allow it to, I think, drop some sort of support in terms of little cash bonuses, much like the airdrops from the old game or something like that. Or maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I might be getting it mixed up with something else, but. Yeah, the, the engineering monkey is a support monkey. I'm not convinced about that. But, well, it is what it is. That's the category it's in. And, um, well, you know what? The engineer monkey is about as useful as it was in Bloom City 5. Still a decent tower, especially for early game, at least until you come across something with camo. Here's your little monkey that gives you, like, a, uh, a summary of all the events and stuff that are happening right now that you can go ahead and try your hand at, get your hands on some extra goodies and stuff such as power-ups and so forth. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, another thing that's really new inside Bloons TD6, which I thought as soon as I read this for the first time before I played the game, I thought to myself, what is this? It's, it's just going to ruin the gameplay. What are they thinking? Heroes. Heroes are new. Um, well, I, I have to be, admit my apprehension was a little bit premature because honestly the these don't actually go ahead and ruin the gameplay they just add to it they're built in a way the whole game was designed in a way so that you can ignore heroes if you want but if you use them they're not going to dominate gameplay or require lots of attention from you i mean they could just sit there and bubble away and what they do is they get experience over time, not by the amount of balloons that they pop or anything, but just by the amount of time and waves that they have gone ahead and um, survived in. They can, they just go ahead and gain XP normally through that, and they can level up to about level 20, I think is the maximum. And along the way, they pick up all of these abilities. Every single level, if they're not picking up an ability, they're either buffing the ability or buffing themselves with their attack, attack range or attack speed, something like that. Um, yeah, they don't really get in the way. They sort of just complement the gameplay as opposed to dominate it or, you know, end up not really contributing very well to gameplay. So Heroes, all in all, was actually quite good. I have to admit, it's worth it. They, they don't ruin the gameplay. So don't shy away from this game just because you see this heroes thing and think to yourself that it's a little bit of a copycat of Kingdom Rush. Maybe, because it might be. But uh, seriously, no, nah, it, it works out well. Heroes are great. They're there as... They, they're there? They are there as support, and they support quite well. 
you can make them a main feature of your gameplay if you want but you don't have to um there's plenty of heroes to select from including four that you get to play with pretty much straight off the bat after the tutorial you can select between one of these four heroes and of course they have different abilities so you can adjust your style or strategy to suit or you can adjust your hero to suit the situation that you're in with whatever map you're playing so Quincy is kind of like a, a dart monkey on steroids. Um, Gwendolyn is a pyromaniac that loves setting things on fire, which is great when you want to attack things like um, lead balloons and not have to spend money on a bomb tower or anything like that. You can go ahead and use Gwendolyn straight away. In-game cost of 900, so it's a little bit more than a bomb tower. But remember, the bomb tower doesn't go ahead and level up over time, whereas Gwendolyn does, and she does that without even you know requiring any extra input from you and it just gets better and better so all on all in all the pyromaniac is pretty good next you've got the commander striker jones basically striker jones is a bomb tower who has a ability that basically stuns some balloons for a little while it's not that great and also has a secondary ability that you get later on which uh, supports bomb towers and mortar monkeys that have activated abilities that have cooldown. Basically, you hit this and any of those bomb towers or whatnot inside the range of Striker Jones will have their cooldown completely reset. So you can fire off a whole bunch of MOAB maulers and then hit the artillery command and then fire them all off again. So you can get two sh strikes for the price of one. Um... It's not bad. Also, uh, even though it doesn't say anything here, Striker Jones also supports bomb towers and mortar towers and so forth. Normally, as Striker Jones levels up, they will um, he will go ahead and give like little buffs, like a extra ten percent range or ten percent attack speed to all bomb towers in range or something like that. You know, little things like that, or increase the popping power of mortar towers in range by one. Something. Yeah, little things like that happen as Striker Jones levels up. So if you're into bomb towers and that sort of thing, Striker Jones is a great hero for you. Uh, lastly, we have Oban Greenfoot. Basically, this guy is like a druid on steroids. So you've got your druid on steroids. <laughs> you've got your bomb tower on steroids. You've got your dart shooter or your dart monkey on steroids. And Gwendolyn is, we don't really have a pyromaniac style tower, do we? No, we don't really. I mean, there are towers that set things on fire, like the mortar tower, but Gwendolyn isn't really a mortar tower of sorts. Hey, you know what? All right. Mortar tower on steroids that can shoot instead of throw mortars. How does that sound? That's what Gwendolyn is. Uh, you've also got a whole bunch of other heroes that you have to actually purchase with monkey money. Yep, monkey money is back. Uh, of course, it has to be. And yeah, you can go ahead and spend a lot of monkey money on these heroes that are here. Um, from here onwards, I've already unlocked a couple. I've unlocked Benjamin, who cost me 3,000 monkey money to unlock. A very good investment because... Benjamin is actually the only hero that doesn't attack balloons directly, but rather you use Benjamin to basically support you in making more money. That's really pretty much what Benjamin does. Um, makes you rich faster so that instead of having a hero that helps support you uh, popping balloons, you've got a hero that helps support your finances so that you can buy more towers to help you pop balloons. And I like that. Um, I found Benjamin especially useful personally, actually, while I was trying to save up more monkey money so that I could buy the tower that I wanted to buy. Or the, the hero, sorry. And that hero is Adora. I only just recently got her. I've only tried her out a couple of times. And, well, I'm just going to call it this, this hero is broken. Um, she needs to be nerfed big time because she's just way too powerful. With all of the other heroes that I've played so far, and I haven't played all of them, I haven't unlocked some of these other ones, they're not heroes that can dominate the day. 
um, they need support. They, they're there as a support, really. They kind of join the orchestra of towers that you go ahead and place on the field, whereas Adora, you can build a couple of towers to support her directly, and she can just take on the whole field herself, pretty much, right up to almost, like, wave 92 or something like that by herself. She is insanely overpowered. I'll have to show you that one day. Maybe in this video, maybe not. Uh, let's see. That's heroes, and like I said, they, they just fit in the game well. They really do. You've got your co-op, which I haven't even tried yet. Um, what you can do is you can help join forces with someone to go ahead and just, I don't know, bid feel. I genuinely have never played co-op before. Maybe I should try it one day. Um, quick match, create match, join match. Okay, so create and join if you want to play with someone specific or you can just hit quick match, I'm guessing, to start matching off with someone just randomly and you just play a field together. Sounds good enough. Um, let's see. Now, in the previous game, you had spies. Spies have kind of been replaced or superseded with powers, and some of them are back. You've got your banana farmer. You've got other things such as, well, road spikes and um, exploiting pineapples are no longer in the game, by the way. You can't just go ahead and buy them as like a quick little fix afterwards you know, when you're in-game. Instead, they are um, powers, which is your old spies. A lot of stuff has disappeared, but some stuff has remained. Like, for instance, a lot of those spies that shot directly at um, balloons are gone. Also, the meerkat spy, which is a real shame, is actually gone. But I think there was another power that kind of did the same thing, that kind of replaced it a little bit. Oh, yeah, we've got the camo trap. Monkey engineering is its finest. This trap will, will remove camo state from the first 500 balloons that touch it. I'm not sure exactly how useful that is. That's a bit situational. So it disappears after the first 500 balloons. The meerkat spy was forever in the, um, in the game that you were playing at the moment. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. It's different, but whatever. Anyway... You've got all of these powers. You can buy them using monkey money and you can store them up. You also just get powers through the natural course of playing the game by getting certain achievements for the most part or beating, you know, daily challenges and all that stuff. Those exist in Bloom's TD6 as well. So you kind of rack these things up as you go. There's quite a few. One useful one I found was the tech bot. Uh, it's the only way to automate activating abilities. Um, basically activating your abilities within its range, uh, with towers within its range. Sorry. So TechBot is good, but it's not smart in that it will just activate abilities because it's activatable. So it might not have the best timing, but if you're really lazy, you know what? Just throw down a tech bot in the middle of all of your towers with activated abilities. And, um, yeah, at least you'll know they'll be activating them and doing something your super monkey storm is back as always basically it doesn't do a complete board wipe anymore it will damage um blimps but it won't destroy some of them so super monkey storm is not the be all end all savior anymore let's see you've got your monkey boost basically all towers attack twice as fast for 15 seconds that's kind of a very good little quick get out of jail free thing. If you're really, really struggling and you're about to lose, if you're quick enough with the mouse and the clicking, you know, click your powers, click monkey boost, and that might save your bacon, but it's not something I'd want to rely on personally. Thrive. Increase cash production from all of your towers by 25% for the rest of the round and the entire next round. I'm not convinced this is useful. To be honest, if it was all towers by 25% for the remainder of the game, then that might be more useful. Or if it was a much higher percentage with that restriction of two rounds, then that would be useful. But only 25% for this round and the next for 70 monkey money? 
How is that useful? If you are set up in a way so that you could find 25% more cash over two rounds useful, then chances are you're generating enough cash to be able to invest that cash back into generating more cash so that you can get it and keep it. Like, I, I just don't get this. Maybe there might be a situation in some modes where this would really save your bacon. I don't know. I'm yet to find a, a justifiable use for Thrive. If you have a good use, put it down in the comments below. Let us know. Next, you've got Time Stop. Um, basically, freeze everything. So you can focus on managing your monkeys. Okay, so freeze the balloons, but not actually freeze them like with an ice tower. It's just stop time and give you a little bit of time to like place down monkeys and adjust your, you know, attack priorities, all that stuff. Okay, fair enough. Sure. Why not? Again, situational, but could be useful. This one is nice. Need a quick, quick cash top up? Get Monkey Command to fire down one of these bad boys stacked with cash ASAP. So it's around about 800 to 1,000 um, in-game cash. It's like starting off with more cash. And it costs like 200 uh, monkey money. So it's not cheap, but it's probably one of the more useful of all of these powers, if I'm going to be honest, because, hey, who doesn't like starting off with more cash? Uh, let's see. Banana farming, you know, this basically gathers bananas. But now that um, two out of three of the upgrade paths on banana farms don't drop bananas, um, especially past from, I think it's the third tier upgrade onwards, then banana farmers, they, they kind of nowhere near as useful as they used to be in the old um, previous game. So I'm yet to actually find a use for it. I probably never will use them, but anyway, they're there for you if you do want to go the top tier, uh, the top path to upgrade, which generally speaking does give the most bang for your buck, but it's the most, you know, micromanagement intensive because you've just got to constantly move your mouse over and click those big boxes of bananas. I mean, a banana farm could be useful if you've got lots of those. I mean, that's that's automating that. That's problem solved. But um, for my style of play, I haven't found the banana farming useful. <laughs> Whereas in the previous game, I found it very useful um, just because of the way the game was. I'd usually make like a whole bunch of banana farms and only upgrade them to tier two on both paths. And then, no, I'd upgrade it to tier two on the first path so that it was generating as many bananas as it could without me having to sacrifice the path to upgrade to the bank. And then I'd place like four or five of those around a banana farm or maybe even six if I could squeeze them in. And then and only then after a few rounds of that, um, and then, you know, using that, those funds to first create more towers to stop myself from losing. Then I'd go back to those banana farms. I'd chuck a, I think a uh, monkey village in the middle to make all of the upgrades, the expensive upgrades on the second path much cheaper and then go ahead and upgrade them all to banana investments. That's the only time I would use banana farmer and I'd use it just about every single game because of that. But here, not useful. Pontoon and portable lake. You know what they are. They're back and they're useful. Uh, road spikes. Now it's a power. It's no longer something you can purchase. So just keep that in mind. A huge stack of road spikes. I don't know how huge the stack is. So yeah, caution with that. Now this is a throwback. For those of you who used to play balloons a long time ago, guess what? Yes, that's right. I think it was in the second or the third Bloons TD. You could get, you couldn't get road spikes. Instead, you got glue, um, globs of glue that you could throw down on the field. And also you could get um, exploding pineapples, I believe. Or was it glue and tax? I can't remember. But yeah, glue was one of the things that you could continually purchase for like 
10 or 15 cash or something and throw down all over the field. Uh, basically, they wouldn't last long, but yeah, they would slow down the balloons that went over them. I think it was the third TD. Anyway, Glue Trap is back and it slows down the first 300 balloons that go over it for 50 bucks. I'm sorry, there is a Glue Gunner Tower that does a much better job of this. So again, maybe there's a situation where this might be useful. I haven't found it yet. So if you find a situation useful for the glue trap, um, let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, correct me on which versions of Bloons TD. The glue um, was something that you could actually go ahead and purchase over and over again and put down on the, on the track, like road spikes and um, exploding pineapples. Let me know which one that was. MOAB mine. Detects the presence of MOAB class balloons and will explode causing, explode causing lots of damage. Okay, so I'm guessing you just put this near the path and uh, it's not attracted to balloons. It's only attracted to blimps and then it explodes. I'm sorry, 50 monkey money for getting something that does what a lot of other towers in the game can do when upgraded to the correct path. No, nah. if you, you, I'm sorry, no. Maybe in challenges where there's a situation for it, it might be useful. But again, if you're relying on something like the MOAB mine, then maybe you're not quite playing the game right. You should adjust your strategy. Um, same thing for the camo trap. Come on. Removes camo for the first 500 balloons. How is that useful? Because it doesn't remove camo or that, I don't think that 500 balloons counter only ticks off when there's like a camo balloon over it. I think it ticks over every time a balloon ticks over it. So, yeah, not sure that's useful. Um, tech bot we've talked over. Last one, energizing totem. It will increase the attack speed of all monkeys in range by 25%. Last five rounds and it can be recharged. Now, I've never used this one, and I've got one. I'd like to see what it means by recharged. I'm guessing it costs in-game cash. Just recharge. If that, if that's the situation, then, yeah, I could see that being useful. If you want just a little bit more attack speed on from everything, especially early in the game, that could be really useful. But there are, again, many support abilities and supporting passive abilities that other towers can give to each other to kind of mimic this. I mean, I'm sure it will stack on top of those, but eh, I don't know. Maybe it could be useful, maybe not. Now, for those of you who are visually astute, you might have seen a little circle up here called Insta Monkeys. What is that? Well, not only can you store up and use powers in game, you can store up and use instant monkeys in game. These are monkeys that you have at your command for free. You don't have to pay for them. Furthermore, they're not just monkeys that are just the monkey themselves or the tower. You can also get variants of it that have already got upgrades within certain paths to a certain tier. So I've got a 300. Remember, there are three paths to upgrade monkeys from. First path. Is upgraded to tier three, whereas the second and third paths are upgraded, not upgraded. That's why they're zeros. So this is a catapult dart monkey that I can just drag and drop on the field at any time. It's a one-time use though. So I've been collecting these again, just like the powers. They just come naturally throughout the normal course of gameplay. Plus also, just a little tip, whenever you play any map with any difficulty level, try and beat wave 100 because every time you beat wave 100 you get an insta monkey and it's it kind of changes from uh time to time so not time to time it, it's kind of either randomly or quasi randomly selected um so yeah free insta monkey i haven't got a super monkey yet unfortunately gee it'd be great if i did um but i've got uh, let's see i've got a couple of banana farms I've got a wide range of druids. I've got, let's see, I've even got a decent little sniper monkey there. Boomerang monkeys, similar. 
Uh, let's see. I've got a monkey ace. Ooh, he's got a small upgrade there. Monkey buccaneers. Yeah, that's an interesting combo. Not one I'd select, though. Um, alchemist. I've got two of the unupgraded alchemists. And yeah, you can... You can't purchase these directly because, yeah, as you can imagine, there would be lots and lots of variants given that it can be any variation of, you know, upgraded paths, upgraded or not upgraded, and also tiers for those paths being upgraded all the way up to, you know, um, tier five monkeys. So what you can do instead is you can buy instant monkeys if you want. This actually costs real cash. So there's that caution to go with that. But basically you can buy stuff that gives you like a range of different types of monkeys where some guarantees are in place, like five monkey towers, two tier ones, two tier twos, and a tier three monkey. That's the tier of upgrade for the most upgraded path, I'm guessing, for three bucks. Uh, they're randomly selected monkeys, and the path of which that tier is upgraded to is random as well. Um, you can get 10 tier 3 insta monkeys for 6 bucks, or for the same price, you can get 10 tier 4 monkeys. Uh, well, who would buy this one? <laughs> okay, so that's basically how you get insta monkeys if you're not getting them through the natural course of play. Quite useful, as especially, I suppose, during gameplay in much harder maps, at much harder difficulties. That's why I've got, I've got quite a few right now. I've played this game for a little bit, and to be honest, I'm just banking up all of those, saving them for a rainy day when I really need them. Um, last thing is knowledge. Now, in the previous game, you put skill points towards certain generic things that just made your gameplay easier or better or whatnot. Like, for instance, you could increase the amount of... I think they used gold tokens as the currency, whereas here it's just skill points. And it's also a mixture of um, skill points and monkey money for upgrading certain things in your monkey knowledge bank. Um, before in the tokens, you do simple things like increase the attack speed of everything, or you could start with more in-game cash or more in-game lives, or you could cripple or sabotage the amount of hit points that all blimps came into the field with, you know, things like that. And then there were also tower specific upgrades that you do. There was this gimmick, I think in the, um, I think it's in both the free version on the desktop in Flash and also the version that you can get on mobile devices. Um, this one where you could buy fields, at most two fields at a time or one field at a time, where you could plonk down a like a building that represents that tower type and then you could upgrade it to affect all all towers of that type to make it better, like, you know, an increase in tax speed and all that stuff. Anyway, that sort of thing existed. That sort of, it's, it's a little bit convoluted and complex, that sort of thing. So they simplified it and they just made it so you could have monkey knowledge instead. So instead of tokens, you got skills, like I said, and you can go ahead and sync those skill points into all of these various different things and it's all split out into the different groups of types that you can have so you got your primary monkeys that receive primary knowledge military monkeys for military knowledge magic for magic support for support uh you've got a path here for heroes which from what i've read on google and some of the forums is that the hero's knowledge path is kind of incredibly powerful to go ahead and upgrade down because yeah especially with heroes like adora yeah uh, they really 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 benefit from this knowledge like to the point where it's ridiculous a little overpowered like for instance all heroes deal plus one damage to ceramic and fortified balloons that's incredibly useful against fortified um ddt's i believe they're always a pain point 
Uh, let's see. Heroes do one extra damage to Memo AB class balloons with their base attack. Again, Adora, fully upgraded, has eight of those base attacks going every single shot. So that's an extra eight damage um, per shot. But that's an extra eight per time that shot actually goes ahead and, um, like, you know, pierces through. This is getting a bit confusing, but basically it's overpowered as hell. Um, here is start each game at level three. I mean, that's that's fantastic because every single hero, as far as I know, has their first ability unlocked at level three. So as soon as you slap it down, it's got its ability and it's ready to go. It's a little bit of a head start. I think it only equates to about two or three waves of um, experience earlier than what the hero would normally have maybe four but still that's a three to four wave head start on the experience train for your hero so hey pretty good not bad at all and lastly you've actually got i was surprised to see this there's a path for sinking your knowledge points into powers so you can upgrade your mines you can upgrade your camo trap Road spikes. Oh, so they have 21. Uh, they have 20 spikes. There you go. Just learnt it. Just one more. Road spikes piles have 21 spikes in them. Why would you spend a knowledge point on this for one extra spike to increase road spike piles by 5%? Why would you do that? I don't know. Uh, probably because you just got too many monkey knowledge points or because you badly want something further down the line that's 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 punishment anyway uh let's see portable lake costs 40 monkey money less hey same thing with the pontoon that's pretty good monkey storm does more damage not bad the farmer has a larger radius <laughs> with the silhouette looks like an angry farmer doesn't it with the pitchfork Strange. Thrive adds 30% instead of 25%. Nah. Cash drops cost 20 monkey money less. Now that's better. I mean, it's only from 200 monkey money to 180, but still, that's probably the most useful item. Oh, what a kick in the teeth. It actually costs no skill points, but instead it costs <laughs> 500 monkey money. To get 20 monkey money. So to get your return on investment, you would have to use, to break even, you would have to get, oh, that's messed up, 25 cash drops, which means you would have to spend <laughs> so much monkey money, 25 times 180 monkey money. That's how much you would have to spend just to break even before you start making profit on this one. That's ridiculous. But anyway, anyway, start each game with a pile of permanent road spikes at the end of the track. A pile of permanent road spikes. Oh, so not permanent as in never depletes, obviously. But permanent as in it will stay there throughout all rounds as opposed to disappear at the end of the round, maybe? I don't know. I haven't even used the, the normal road spikes pile yet, so I don't know how it behaves, whether or not it disappears. Ambush tech. Techbot gains a targeting option to trigger only when balloons enter a specific track area. Okay. So that could be better. More glue trap, more this, more that. Okay. So anyway, that's powers. Um, similar to before, but in my opinion, probably more organized, more simplified and just better. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and... Should we have a quick gander? Oh, there's also one other thing. Two other things, actually. When you do events and so forth, you can gather yet another type of thing. Oh, well, actually, no. We'll talk about that in a second. Firstly, there's achievements. Uh, you just go ahead and get these through playing normal play. And this is how you actually, or at least how I actually got um, all the powers that I have so far. I haven't purchased a single power. I've also gained quite a few insta monkeys this way as well. 
Uh, oh, that's pretty good. A tier four monkey. Destroy 5,000 ZOMGs. Challenge accepted. Reanimate 250,000 balloons to fight on your side using the Necromancer Wizard. Necromancer Wizard. Is that the tier four or the tier five? I think it's the tier four. Oh, okay. So I might not have done that much because I always upgraded to the tier five, which is not the Necromancer Wizard. It's the next one up. So reanimate 2,500 balloons. All right. That's easy enough. I'll just keep on creating 024 wizards and generate lots of balloons. That's easy enough. I'll get that eventually. All right. What the hell is this? The beekeeper? Okay. So, well, I like that. That's cryptic. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm 22% of the way there to get the beekeeper potentially or something like that. That's interesting. Win games on five different intermediate maps. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Use power-ups or powers 25 times. I've only used the cash drop, I think, so fair enough, whatever. Oh, hello, Super Monkey, 302 Super Monkey. That's a strange combination. Pop 100 million balloons. I'm only 13% of the way there. Far out. Okay. Looks like I've got my work cut out for me. But yeah, long story short. Ooh. Open the daily chest 365 times. That's a joke. So open the daily chest for a year's worth of time. And all you get is one monkey knowledge point and 365 cash. God, I want 10 times that for that man of effort. That is dedication to get that. Complete 50 odysseys. I've only done one or two. No, I've done one. That's 2%. Okay. So, yeah, there's plenty, like, not plenty of achievements. There is a lot, like an insane amount. <laughs> now, if you're... um. A little older like I am. Kalima. That is awesome. Gain 10 levels for a door in one round. Oh, I can do that. Okay. I'm going to try and do that. That'd be awesome. Uh, another one. Looks like the beekeeper is coming back. Oh, I got 0% on that. Yeah, there is a lot of achievements to get. Like I've already cleared out a decent chunk of achievements. And you saw what I got. Oh, well, here they are, actually. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. doesn't tell you the um, the rewards that I got for them, but trust me, a lot of them are either monkey money, insta monkeys, or power-ups, or powers, I suppose you could call them. Gain 10 levels for a door in one round. So I'm going to have to get stupidly rich with in-game cash first, and then get a Dora, and then just go bang, 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 bang. And get myself, okay, that's something I can do later. So anyway, that is Bloons TD6, or at least the changes, or a quick little a quick little look at it. Oh, actually, while you do, um, what you can do is you can even collect a, a separate kind of currency called trophies. You get these from just completing things like uh, odysseys or daily challenges, that sort of thing. And by doing that... When you get all of these trophies, you can spend the trophies on doing little things like pretty much mostly just cosmetic changes. So you can change the look of your MOAB or you can change the look of, yeah, MOABs to look like maulers or is it changing your maulers to look like MOABs or something like that? Anyway, you can do all of these little changes and they cost a little bit just for a little bit of extra Something, something. Uh, let's see. Anything interesting? Super monkey bat. Uh, ghost upgrade effects. Sub ducky pet. That's funny. That's a throwback to the old um, portable lake and the rubber ducky. Bloons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so bloons. It does turn the MOABs into something that looks like the mauler. That'd be pretty funny. I was actually thinking of getting the googly eyes one, but I don't have enough trophies yet to make all my balloons and um, 
all my MOABs look have little googly eyes. I think it'd look funny. But yeah, anyway, there's there's one extra dimension of different things you can do. Ooh, Adora Avatar. Well, I do have Adora. Maybe another day. Nothing in inventory. So yeah, that's that. As for the gameplay, let's have a very... You know what? All right, I won't end the video yet. Let's go very, very quickly and have a look at the gameplay. Um, let's look at... Easy map, an intermediate map, or an advanced map? Uh, let's look at an easy map and let's play it on easy as well. So, what can I play this one? All right, let's do, yeah, I've gone nuts on cubism. I'm like one mood away. I've got two modes away. I've got to beat impoppable on this map and then I've got to beat chimps. And then I can finally get one of the achievements, which is to get all of the medals on um, a map. But it's not all, all of the medals. It's just this medal here. You need to beat it on easy, medium, hard, and all of the modes in hard to get this last medal to show up. It only shows up when you beat all modes on hard on a map. Um, once you get, yeah, all modes on hard. This is the trophy for doing that, and then just easy and medium without the extra modes, then you can get an achievement. And I think the I think the reward's pretty sweet, but anyway, I don't know what it is, I forget. Alright, let's just do cubism once more time. The gameplay looks a little bit different. It's actually fully 3D, or at least quasi fully 3D. A little um, hint for you. The balloons themselves, not the blimps, but the balloons are 2D. And it's probably a good thing they're 2D because honestly, rendering that many things on the screen that's 3D and keeping track of their position, all that stuff would be an absolute nightmare. So I'm glad they kept the game running as fast as possible by making those 2D. It's, it's a pretty good game. I like the way it looks. It's, it's just as... Like, it doesn't lose anything that the old balloons used to have. If anything, I think it just makes it look more cartoony, more cute, more, you know, it's not intimidating, this game at all. It's it's fun, it's light, it's breezy. And I think, not on this map, but on some maps, when you click around, you might get, like, a tiny little Easter egg of, like, an animation of some monkey doing something cheeky or something like that. Uh, the gameplay itself is pretty good. Uh, the interface is just as good as the interface from the old balloons game with the exception that, well, not exception, but it also has the same pitfall, I should say, by having it pop this thing out right on the map somewhere. It could be on the left or the right, depending on what side the tower you're selecting is on. It will go ahead and post it on the other side. And it's not transparent or translucent or anything like that. So it really does just block something. So you have to kind of click away to get disappear if you want to do some micromanaging here. Or yeah, it, it is slightly annoying, but that's really a slight annoyance. It's still quite manageable. Uh, the interface is, apart from that, it's quite clean. You go here to click for your powers. You can go down for your Insta monkeys and you just drag them on. I'm not going to do that because. I'm not going to waste one because that's ridiculous. Uh, let's. Is there any powers I can waste right now? Not really. That's all right. I'll just leave it be. Um. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints other than, like I said, this popping out in front and um, blocking everything behind it, so you can't see. Uh, actually the other complaint I have, the only complaint I have that is for all the balloons TDs is that while there is a button that you can press to fast forward the gameplay, I wish you could fast forward it much faster again, because sometimes, you know, this can get a little bit, you know, repetitive. I'd love for this just move along a lot more quickly, especially in the early levels. That'd be great. But these are all little niggles. Honestly, the game is great. And, you know, all these towers are reasonably detailed as well. As you can see, that's actually a fully 3D rendered monkey.
that's not 2D anymore. So, you know, it looks right. It makes sense. It's kind of a little bit disorienting going from the fifth game to the sixth, where when you're placing towers down, what you have to do is, because it's 3D, you kind of have to look at their feet to judge where the center of them are that you're putting down. Um, yeah, so that's just the only minor adjustment that you have to make and get used to. But other than that, it's great. Looks good. And of course, every single tower is rendered in full 3D. Every single blimp is rendered in full 3D and they look great. Oh yeah, I haven't even put down a door yet. Yeah, let's, let's, um, what do, what am I going to do? This video has gone on for quite some time. I want to be greedy though. I want to try and get that whole upgrade in 10 levels at once with Adora. But to do that, I'm going to have to wait until much later before I put her on the track. I'm going to have to upgrade all these monkeys like to a certain point so that their sell value is a lot. And then I'm just going to have to actually, no, that's not true. Adora has this thing called blood sacrifice that you can use to sacrifice towers to use their cell value, but in a multiplied way to help upgrade her through the levels. That's something you can do. You can buy upgrading a hero to the next level using cash, but using blood sacrifice for Adora sacrifices a tower and it's a lot more efficient because you get a hell of a lot more out of the money that you spent in the tower than if you went ahead and just go upgraded her normally so what i should be doing right now if i want to go for that achievement is essentially try and get as much monkey no not monkey money but in-game cash coins as i can what is this thing called oh, it's not going to tell me okay all right let's just keep going i think i can go quite far with just the monkey buccaneer I don't know why I put down the ice monkey. That's just ridiculous. I have no good use for that right now. Um, let's see. There we go. So now I've got my first merchantman. Merchantmen are kind of like monkey buccaneers that double up as a very weak banana farm of sorts. Gives me an extra 200 cash at the end of every round you can upgrade that to the favored trades version which gives you 500 cash at the end of every round um it's better than a banana farm because even though it's a weak version you know what it still shoots at balloons so instead of it, it's kind of like a nice little compromise between trying to get more cash per round generated while at the same time not neglecting your popping power out in the field it it does a bit of both so it's a good little mid-range thing in fact if i'm going to be blunt the monkey buccaneer might be a overpowered early game tower now sure there's not always water for you to place a monkey buccaneer in especially in like a good spot that reaches everywhere you need it to reach to do you know good damage to all the balloons going but honestly this thing with very little upgrade can take down frozen and lead balloons it can take down black and also white balloons it can see camo and it in this particular path it can also generate some money so it's kind of like the all-rounder tower. It's great for the start, but you don't want to have too much of a love affair with it for too long, though. Otherwise, it will burn you. Um, they're great at the start. They're kind of not really great as anything more than like as a an augmented version of a um, banana farm mid to late game, though. So don't think you can slap down a lot of these and be okay. It doesn't work that way. But still, for what they are, they're nice. I think the next... I think I've got camo coming soon. 
No, I've had camo. I think in about four rounds, the first lead will be down. Let's get another buccaneer in and let's upgrade them the same way. Yeah, I know. I go about telling you on how monkey buccaneers are great for the early game, but don't go committing to them too much. I'm on easy, so I can commit to them too much because I can afford it. So that's what I'm going to do, at least for now anyway. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's calculated. <laughs> It's rated E for easy, okay? I can do this and get away with it. Uh, need a little bit more cash. And then I'm going to start just banking up the cash. When I feel like I've got more than enough to upgrade a door automatically, like 10 levels in one round, that's when I'm going to go ahead and plonk her down and get it done. Now in the meantime, let's get an upgraded sub down here so that we can easily take on the MOAB. I'm a piercing darts. That's what you want. Let's see. Let's get some more vision going. This is looking good. Just trying to chew through this. Now remember, I can't blood sacrifice until like level seven or something. So I won't be able to rely on that at first, at least to upgrade a Dora. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. There we go. Now I've got a monkey sub that can see pretty much everywhere and see camo as well. And because it's got armor piercing darts, it does that <laughs> to an MOAB. Perfect. Okay. So we're going into free play. And now we're just going to try and do that little Adora trick. So let's just churn through all the rounds here. Hmm. How do I get cash faster? Should I just bite the bullet and get a monkey banana farm and micromanage it? Yeah, I probably should. Okay, I'll get a couple of monkey farms. And I'll do them the most efficient way possible, and I'll try and just, I'll just bite the bullet and, yeah. Okay. Okay, bananas, bananas, lots of bananas. But on a research facility, I'm not going to upgrade them that much. Wait a minute. Are these generating more cash per round than the banana farms? What are the banana farms doing? 26, 26, 104, 208. No, they're not. 312, 416. Okay, so it's something like, yeah, double the amount these would generate for what looks like a similar cost. All right, I concede it. It's worth it. Let's go ahead and slap down a third one here to really expedite the process. And let's hope we don't die to something else. Really relying on the fire from those buccaneers.
All right. I'm biting the bullet and upgrading a couple of these. You know what? I know this is on easy, ironically. It just feels too easy. I mean, look at me. I've got four ships, a sub, and a couple of random monkeys out. That's it. There's nothing special going on here. Eh, whatever. Let's go ahead and get that achievement for Adora. So I wouldn't mind a free cash drop. There wasn't any stipulation on difficulty, was there? I don't remember reading one. Eh, whatever. Ooh, I can sacrifice the banana farms. That's what I can do. Yeah, let's do that. Using the, um... The blood trade or blood whatever it is. All right, I think maybe a couple of more rounds. You know what? Let's go ahead and place this here. I'm going to create a juggernaut. I'm not going to upgrade it to the max because it's just too expensive, but I'm going to create juggernaut and make it attack last so that it's always firing this way to basically make really short work or help make really short work of all the balloons. So that way only MOABs are an issue and they shouldn't be much of an issue because of the sub. And then at round 59, at the end of round 59, I'll put down a Dora and I'll try and upgrade her 10 times. I genuinely don't know how much cash I'm going to need for it, but I suspect it's going to be eh, something like maybe freaking 50, 60,000 cash plus at least one sacrifice of something expensive. All right, slowly getting there. While we wait, um, yeah, just seriously, this game, I highly recommend it. Bloons TD5, especially considering that you can still play it for free right now, I also highly recommend playing that if you haven't. They're both great tower defense games. They're, they're just so replayable as well. Some games, you play them, you clock them, and then you never see them again. They get boring, but these ones, no, not at all. Okay, so sell, sell. Adora goes down. Adora gets upgraded. Oh, crikey. Okay. Juggernaut gets upgraded. Oh no, blood rituals on cooldown. No. Okay, new plan. Sell. Sell. <laughs> oh no, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt something chronic. Wait. Yes. <gasps> oh no. Upgrade her 10 times. So from level one, that's to level 11. Oh no, I need, oh no, oh no, this is going to really hurt. Yep, yep, please tell me I've got enough. Yes. Okay, upgraded 10 times in one round. 
here we go. Um, oh, wow. Well. She's destroying everything. Yep, I got the achievement. Lovely. Okay, so there you have it. I got the achievements and... Wait, did I? Oh, there's no scroll bar that you can use. You have to scroll down with the wheel. There's another tiny complaint about this game, okay? Oh, whatever that was, I got it. No, I didn't. No, that's question marks. My bad. Okay, completed. Is it the top of the list? Um, where's a picture of a door? Please tell me I got it. Oh, yeah. This one was expensive, but again, it was okay. I just did that during an easy mode somewhere. Level any hero to level 20. I did that. Oh, no. Don't tell me I didn't get the achievement. I was sure I got the achievement. Kalima, gain 10 levels for Adora in one round. Oh, I should have done it while I was in the round. Oh, that sucks. Okay. On that note. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Blinz TD6. Get it. Play it. You're going to enjoy it. I'm out of here. And you're going to see more videos from me about this great game. Ciao.